Once airborne, Skylab will become a luxurious space station, the first for this country. It's as big as a three-bedroom house. Minutes and counting, and the countdown continues to run smoothly as it has throughout the morning. Cryogenics loaded aboard the vehicle. We continue to aim for a liftoff time of 1.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Now T-minus 9 minutes, 45 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. In a few minutes, the United States begins another generation in space. At Cape Canada, Flo Kennedy, Florida, Skylab stands ready to be launched into orbit around the Earth. Skylab is a sophisticated, expensive space laboratory. The, our attempt not just to explore space, but to use space. Tomorrow, three astronauts will join this laboratory and work inside it for 28 days. The crew, Captain Charles Conrad, mission commander, Joseph Kerwin, Mission Doctor, and Commander Paul Weitz, all of the U.S. Navy, will do some interesting, some valuable, and possibly historic work up in space. So with two rockets ready for space, there is a double countdown going on today at Cape Kennedy in Florida. One for the Skylab launch coming up very soon, the other for the launch tomorrow of the crew. Today's launch of the workshop will be in the most northerly direction yet, at an angle of 50 degrees to the equator. This path will carry Skylab over an area where 95% of the world's population lives. Liftoff. Liftoff uh, will follow an ignition at 8.9 seconds. We just passed the 90 second mark in the countdown. At 8.9 seconds in the count, we'll expect to get an engine sequence start on the five first stage engines of the Saturn V. They'll build up thrust. That thrust will be monitored. The vehicle will be held down for the full 8.9 seconds and we'll expect to get lift off right at T0. We're approaching the one minute mark in our countdown at this time as it proceeds smoothly. Mark T minus one minute and continuing to count. A water deluge system now has been turned on, activated at the pad area. Pressurization taking place now, the various tanks aboard the vehicle being pressurized. Switching to internal power. All stages switching now to internal power. All propellant tanks being pressurized. Count continuing smoothly. The water at the pad covering the uh, flame deflectors. Now we've passed the 30 second mark. Water also will be coming on to the decks of the mobile launcher at the ignition point. T minus 20 seconds. And the countdown continues to go smoothly. Guidance release. T minus 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. We have ignition sequence has started. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And we have a liftoff. The Skylab lifting off the pad now, moving up.
Skylab 1. Skylab Space Station now in orbit, coming up on the Honeysuckle Australia tracking station. Still some doubt in the minds of flight controllers here in Mission Control as to whether the main solar panels on the workshop have indeed deployed. They've had no confirmation on the ground from telemetry that this is the case. The solar panels on the telescope mount have deployed normally. Also the micrometeoroid shield around the workshop has partially deployed. The large wings, of three sections of solar panels on each wing, one on each side of the workshop, generate uh, anywhere from 51 to 125 volts depending on the sun angle at the time. This uh, power goes through chargers which in turn keep storage batteries in the workshop built up to supply power throughout the mission. Uh, half, half of each orbit approximately is in darkness when no power can be generated by the solar panels. The two solar panel wings are deployed out to the side of the workshop and each panel on the wings operates on uh, similar to a scissors action, uh, spring-loaded to extend the panels. Be getting data now through Honeysuckle. We'll stand by for our comments to the flight director from the flight controllers who are concerned with the workshop electrical power system. The countdown for the launch of Skylab 2, scheduled for 9 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time on Friday, began on schedule at 5.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time today. After installation of flight batteries in the Saturn 1B second stage and instrument units, batteries will be powered up in a series of tests of flight control, radio frequency, and telemetry systems will be initiated. Loading of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen in the command service module is scheduled for later today.